I want to apprise everyone of an incident in the Strait of Hormuz today involving USS Boxer and Navy amphibious assault ship. The Boxer took defensive action against an Iranian drone, which had closed into a very, very near distance, approximately 1,000 yards, ignoring multiple calls to stand down and was threatening the safety of the ship and the ship's crew. The drone was immediately destroyed. So to talk about the latest with Iran, I'm joined by Ryan Morrow, a national security analyst at the Clarion Project and a professor of counterterrorism at Liberty University. Ryan, welcome. Thanks for being here. L let's talk about Iran. Seizing this foreign oil tanker, believed to be from the United Arab Emirates, is Iran just looking for trouble here? Well, it is true that Iran is looking to engage in provocations in the region in order to get the price of oil up, the price of shipping up. Uh, this is an interesting incident because now what we're hearing is that the UAE is saying that it is not their ship, even though it may have docked there, uh, that this is an Iraqi-owned ship that was flying the flag of Panama. And so it's opening up a few different possibilities here. And I talked to some different sources familiar with the maritime security situation in the area. And what they say is that it's actually possible that the Iranians were trying to crack down on a ship that they believed was smuggling oil and in fact was. It's also possible because the Iranians engage in oil smuggling of their own and they take a cut of what the smugglers earn, uh, that the smuggler didn't pay up. And then it's also possible that this was a botched operation on the part of the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps, that they thought that they were seizing a Western or a UAE vessel, uh, and it turned out that they weren't. Uh, so those mm. are the three different theories that I've heard over the past hour or so. Yeah, a lot of ways this could go uh, here. So there, there have been a number of incidents in the Strait of Hormuz. I mean, we know it's the only way to get from the Persian Gulf to open ocean waters. Is Iran trying to control this critical passageway? They always have been, and they've always wanted to at least hold it hostage, if not control it. Uh, have the ability to say we have a lot of short-range missiles in the area. We have um, naval ships that were willing to engage in suicide attacks if necessary. Uh, in order to threaten shipping there. So this is a very big card for them to play, uh, mm -hmm. but it's a dangerous one for them to play because it invites military action against them uh, from the, basically the entire world because the whole world is affected by it. Uh, now, what my sources have also said is that apparently information has come in indicating that there was some type of meeting between the Supreme Leader of Iran and the Revolutionary Guards Corps. And uh, according to this intelligence, the Iranians are planning an escalation in about three weeks uh, where these type of incidents will escalate, but not just in the Strait of Hormuz, but also on the western side of the Arabian Peninsula in the Red Sea and perhaps even in the Gulf of Aqaba near northwestern Saudi Arabia. Yeah, a lot of volatility there for sure. So turning to President Trump's announcement that an Iranian drone was destroyed, is this the U.S. sending a message of retaliation against Iran for its provocations? Yes, for sure. Uh, so we know that the Iranians have engaged in these types of buzzings of, of aircraft carriers and having drones and aircraft come close to our military vessels, um, partly to harass them, partly to test us to see how we react. This may signal a change in the rules of engagement. Uh, whereas before the Iranians could get away with this type of thing, uh, the U.S. military is now saying no more. And, and that's why we shot off the warning shots um, or somehow otherwise conveyed the message to them, don't go any further. The Iranians would not back down. And now they just lost a drone as a result. Ryan Morrow, National Security Analyst at the Clarion Project. Thanks for joining me here on Take 30.